fun drinking game. Take a drink every time somebody says Game of Thrones in this episode. <laughs> That'll be a good one. Black Sails was the opposite of a roller coaster. It was like an immediate drop of excitement and then a slow ending that kind of just dragged and climbed up a hill slowly. <laughs> Black Sails was trying to be the pirate Game of Thrones. Black Sails was a drunken debauchery with a lot of lady parts and excitement <laughs> in it and waiting for the good stuff. Hey everybody and welcome to Falling Towers Watch the First Podcast, the podcast in which we watch the first episode so you don't have to with us as always. It's Mr. Michael Kenyon Rosenberg. Hey, only the first. Special guest, Kelly Park. Yarr! Actress, yarr. Actress and pirate, that is Kelly pirate Park. Today. <laughs> My name is Ryan T. Husk and I was gonna dress up like a pirate too, but then it's hot in LA. Mm. So, uh, first things first, right? Uh, if you guys want us to watch and review the first episode of a show, just say WTF and the show down below. Like say WTF Simpsons, which means watch the first Simpsons, or WTF Futurama, which means watch the first Futurama, and so forth. Uh, also, please subscribe, like, comment, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. Hit the bell icon. Hit the bell icon for right. notifications. <laughs> uh, first things first, Michael Kenyon Rosenberg. What was Black Sales about? By the way, suggested by Eve England out in Wales. Ah. Wales, our good friend Miss Eve England suggested this. Thanks for suggesting things. I'm, um, <laughs> so this uh, Black Sales is set roughly two decades before the events of Treasure Island. During the golden age of piracy, feared Captain Flint brings on a younger crew member as they fight for the survival of New Providence Island. In this episode, the once powerful Captain Flint faces mutiny by his own pirate crew. John Silver joins Flint, eventually becoming Long John Silver, I'm guessing, in... in, uh, in uh, Treasure Island. Hmm. He joins Captain Flint hiding something of great value. Ooh. On New Providence, Eleanor Guthrie keeps order in the face of a resurgent Royal Navy. Exciting. Yeah, that was way more exciting than the, the episode. <laughs> wow, already throwing stones directly at <laughs> Kelly, our special guest who's Sorry, a pirate Sorry, Kelly. Lover. I didn't mean to. Arr, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, you're very forgiving to... for a pirate. Mm. Oh, for now, they were pretty. <laughs> they were pretty forgiving and civilized and advanced for pirates too. I was kind of puzzled, but I was like, "Wow, 300 years ago, they sure had a lot of civilized and uh, nuanced bits to these pirates." Intellectual humor. I went, "Huh, that's interesting." I was like, "They're smart." I wrote that in my little thing. I was like. Smart pirates. <laughs> in your little thing like that book little, the little, torn page. My little notes, intellectual pirates. So the way we like to start this show is we talk about what we expected versus what we got. Um, so first we'll start with what we expected uh, before we watch the show. Michael, what'd you expect? Um, well, I, I really didn't know anything about this show. I really hadn't heard anything about it. But when I read the synopsis, I was like, oh, and actually the very first thing that comes up on the screen is it's like adult content, adult language, graphic violence, nudity. So I was like, all right, Game of Thrones. So I was expecting a pirate <laughs> Game of Thrones. Okay. Uh, what about you, Kelly? What did you expect before you watched it? I definitely thought the same thing, like piggybacking. I definitely thought it was going to be when I saw, because I watched the, the preview for it. And I thought, one, totally up my alley, because I like to, you know, uh, do my little live action role play or different costumes and stuff like that. So as you can see, one of my many costumes. So I was like, this is definitely on my alley. And then, um, yeah, it was very, when I watched it, I was like, oh, Game of Thrones meets the sea. Okay, okay. 
So I definitely was, I was excited. I was really excited about it. So I was like, when you asked me to do it, when you asked me to watch it, I was like, oh uh, yeah, I will. <laughs> uh, you know, that's funny. Cause that's pretty much what I expected to. And I didn't know anything. I never, I never read the synopsis, but I, it would probably save me a lot of heartache too, because it kind of explains things ahead of time is what that, <laughs> that little synopsis does for you. But I just go in completely blind into shows. Uh, but with this, I, I just, that's just what I assumed, I guess. Uh, I feel like, you know, in the, the, the pitch was, all right, guys, you know how popular Game of Thrones is, right? Just imagine Game of Thrones, but with pirates. pirates. And they're like, sold. Don't you want to know what's it? Nope, sold. Oh. But I, uh, nope, yeah. sold. Okay. So that's what I expected. This was on um, Stars, also, by the way. And so obviously they're trying to compete with HBO. Mm. No competition. See, I don't know anything about stars. I don't even know any any shows that have ever been on stars. Well, I don't either. But stars <laughs> is like an, another uh, premium premiums okay. uh, channel subscription. So there's like a stars, HBO, Showtime, Cinemax. Those I think those are like the big four. I think. I feel bad. I'm one of these. Did you say like AMC? Few things that I don't have. <laughs> but I'll yeah, I don't even. <laughs> Did you guys know anything that's been on stars before? Nope. Just like that. movies, I mean. What is it? Movies from the 90s. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. That's okay. So that was what we expected. We all kind of expected, you know, Game of Thrones on the ocean, right? It, pirate version. Uh, but now, now here's the key is what did we get? Well, uh, Michael, what did, what did you get? <laughs> I got a very weak facsimile of Game of Thrones. On the sea. On the sea, yeah. <laughs> a, very, a very, very, very weak. Very, wow. pretty, pretty, pretty sad, really. Everybody at home, that's an inside joke. Michael didn't just stutter. That's an inside joke to somebody that said that once. He yeah. said, pretty, 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 sad, pretty sad, really. really. <laughs> Actually, it's like... Maybe our very first video ever on this channel, come to yeah, think of it. Yeah. By the way, we are celebrating 20 years of Falling Tower, ladies and gentlemen. 20 years of Falling Tower. And this video is from like, it was recorded maybe more was, than, yeah. 20, no, yeah. less, almost 20 years ago, right. maybe 15 to 17 years ago. And well, then it was uploaded, posted, yeah, like 15 uploaded years like, ago. Yeah. Yeah. 12, anyway. 12 or 13. Or... So Kelly, you expected Game of Thrones on the sea. Fish of the Sea, what did you get? Well, um, I got all the nudity that I wanted. <laughs> yep, How, that was, you know. You wanted of, that exact amount? Yep, couple of love scenes, couple of uh, romance, <laughs> some saucy scenes. I was like, okay, <laughs> you know, still don't really want to watch it with my dad, but you know, it's cool. Um, and then I guess I kind of got yeah, I guess to say a little bit of a watered down version, I suppose. Uh, well, the thing is, is I was confused because I thought it was going to the Game of Thrones, but then they like throw in a couple of jokes and stuff. Like they just had a couple, it was very, it had a little bit of comedy to it. Like the hint, but more, the hint more than like a Game of Thrones would have been. Mm -hmm. That was the impression I got. So, hmm. um. I didn't notice any comedy, but then I might've been sleeping during that part. <laughs> no, you know? I yeah, I just, it's Same. Well, not, not comedy. It's it's just every once in a while they, they had a couple, like I said, intellectual jokes that I was like, huh. I, then, I don't even remember one, honestly. Like, no, I believe you. I believe you, but well, I don't guy, remember them. The guy, he comes in with his little fangs, his little, right in the, right in the open. Right. He comes, he goes, Harr! And, and he's, he's like, like, grow up. Grow up. <laughs> so okay. he's like, oh, okay. And I was like, huh, that's cute. You know, but um, I wouldn't, I just, I wouldn't see that probably on Game of Thrones or anything. Not that it's, you know, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, I still, yeah, it was okay. just, that's why, that's what I got from it. I was like, huh. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. That was, that was one, one humorous part. Uh, what I expected was Game of Thrones on the sea. What I got was Game of Thrones on the sea, basically. And I think, you know, I want to be a little less hard on it because if you'll recall the first episode of Game of Thrones, it wasn't the Game of Thrones that we now know. Like Game of Thrones got better and better. Game of Thrones was a thing where people say, just keep watching, it gets better. Just, <laughs> yeah, but who is, what's this, why, I don't really, it gets better. That first episode, 
I mean, looking back at it now, it's, it's fine. It's good. But when I first watched that first episode, I was like, I don't know. There's so many people. I'm, I remember started like, I, I started making up their names. I'm like, well, this guy's name is Brown Gray Stroke. And this is Bard Jim Bomb. And like, so I think we're being a little hard on black cells. At least I am because we're comparing it to what, we remember Game of Thrones being, but not comparing it to the first episode. Again. Maybe all the one thing I'll say about the first. For, by the way, if you want us to review Game of Thrones, WTF Game of Thrones, and then then you can actually hear us talk about all this stuff. But yeah. the one thing and I will we'll pretend say, like we hadn't seen it before. Yeah, we'll pretend yeah. we haven't. We'll, we'll pretend like we haven't been talking about it this whole episode. Um, <laughs> but then the, the the thing I'll say about the first episode of Game of Thrones was they kind of the, they did something that. First of all, it was already a well-established world. I don't know how established this Black Sails world was, but apparently it's based off of Treasure Island. Uh, it's kind of like uh, uh, origin story of John Silver, it seems like. Um, so, so, so they're they're building off of that world, but they're kind of building their own world because they're not they're not really basing it off of Treasure Island. They're just like they're just like, oh well, here's what if it was twenty years before Treasure Island, where the thing about Game of Thrones. And probably my, my my biggest gripe about the first episode, and which, which is why I had to watch it twice, really, to really get it, oh, wow. was that uh, they were just introducing a lot of, they were talking about a lot of characters that weren't on screen. And so that, for that reason alone, you had to like really rewatch it, really pay a lot of attention to pick up on, oh, they're talking about this guy, they're talking about that guy. Where in this, epi- where in this show, it's, they weren't like talking about people that weren't there. Everyone that they were talking about was there on, yeah. on screen. Um, it was just, it was just bad. Wow. Um, Sorry, Eve England for trashing the show that you must love, but yeah, I'm a little surprised. Uh, I thought you'd like it a little bit more. Um, I thought it would too. Here, here's the one thing I'll say about this show. Um, I was so bored by it. Wow. That I was How actually, bored were you? I was so bored that actually I was really enjoying all the costuming and set design. I was like, oh, that, I was like, oh, actually, that's pretty. That's like, oh, there's like, like he's got like the 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 the, the kind of the strings holding his, his sleeve together, but they're kind of frayed and old looking. I was like, oh, that's really good costume design. And usually, if I'm watching a show and I'm really engrossed in it, right. I'm just like, I don't I don't pay any attention to that stuff until like the second or third watch. Because I'm like, oh, the story is so good. Oh, it's got me by the by the short, short and curlies. And and uh, what's that? That's uh, that's a, a euphemism for uh, pubic hairs, which we oh. did see some of in this show. <laughs> <laughs> we saw a beard. We saw a beard. Yeah. Uh, well, Kelly, it seems like you're going to be really battling it out with Michael today. I think. I don't know. Well. Have you really told us if you how you felt about it? If you really liked it, or if you liked parts of it, or yeah, really honestly, I it? liked it. I I did. I um, it really uh, I really liked it. Like I I mean, I wasn't in love at first, but I yeah, I wasn't in love with Game of Thrones either at first. That one took me a few episodes to get into, um, and even then, I think that was like four or five episodes I had to get into before I was like, okay, now I'm really getting somewhere because that was really confusing. And so um, this one was just like, again, since it's a watered down version of it, I also will give the goods with it is that like, I'm only a little confused about what's going on in the first episode. (laughs) There is only just a couple times, like I watched it once and then I went back to two different spots where I'm like, okay, whose side are you on? Let's Mm. do this, you know? So that, that was, that was like the only thing. And then, um, I like, I like, I mean, I love Tom Hopper, so I'm a little biased. Who's so, Tom Hopper? Tom Hopper is the guy that plays the, um, the captain's like assistant, the one that when he gets the paper that's blank and he's like, right. his you know, name like, was Billy Bones. Billy Bones. Billy Bones. Yeah. So Tom Hopper is in like the, the Umbrella Academy. He's in, mm. um, he was in Game of Thrones too. Um, and WTF also, Umbrella Academy, by the way. Oh my God! Yes, you need to like it. Oh, so good. We and then, uh, yep. And then my favorite show, Merlin. Um, he was Percival in the show Merlin. Oh. 
back. UTF, like the, Merlin. We can't watch any of these shows unless anybody, somebody that's a really, comments. Those yeah. are some really great ideas, though. We hadn't thought of Merlin. I love Merlin. Uh, yeah, that's I a mean, great it's one. Not, it's not like, like it's not going to be like great, but it's... Oh, okay. Yeah, you'll have to, you'll have to definitely... So another that, terrible that. show that we have to watch now. Well, it's it's not the storyline. It's the, you know, I mean, it's it's graphics and it's, I mean, it's very like... <laughs> But I, I think it's great. Well, I think this is this is the part of the, the show that I've just invented, which is hold your horses. I've just, <laughs> it's the sh- part of the show where, where we just hold our horses for a second here. And I say, you know what, guys? I don't think black sales was all that bad, personally. And I'll tell you why. Number one, it's, it's, uh, as Mike checks his, his Facebook. Well, you told me to hold my horses. So oh, I, I thought like, you were just right. like, well, I'm going to do something else. I'm bored here. Uh, not seahorses for the pirates out there. Uh, <laughs> here's what I will say. Okay, it's, it was slightly reminiscent of The Witcher because The Witcher had a very cool opening scene and then it just farted on my head the entire way <laughs> after that. And, and that was... You know, and then I had Michael Kenyon Rosenberg syndrome through the rest of that, where I was just looking at other <laughs> stuff. Uh, but it was kind of like that in that the opening scene was the best scene uh, on the show. But I would say that it was overall much, much, much better than The Witcher to me personally. I thought the opening scene was awesome. I thought it was very, very good. Very good. And I was really wowed by it. And I was really surprised. It's like, wow, this is a better show than I would have thought because I thought that there would be a lot more fanfare about a show if it's really good. Um, and I was really surprised at how well done it was. It was just a beautiful opening scene and it was better than if you'll remember not to mention it again, but the game of Thrones opening scene where it shows the white walkers killing, you know, kind of sets up the world there. That was okay too. This was better than that. It was better than the opening scene of the game of game of Thrones and the Witcher to me personally. Um, and this is the big thing. That opening theme song, A plus. A plus. I agree. I was like, I was, I was just settling in and getting all my stuff ready, and it was there, and I was like, oh, I'm getting the tingly feeling, like <laughs> I, you know, Game of Thrones style tingly feeling. I was like, good for you. I was that was on my bucket list was to look up who the composer is because I thought, huh, that's really good. I like that. Um, yeah, and it said who it was, and I recognized the name, and I already forgot who it was, but it said it like composed by or music by whatever, and I was like, that's a familiar name. Yeah. And then they, they went through this cool model thing. Mm-hmm. There's like a, a black skeleton there, yeah. and that was that totally reminded me of Game of Thrones too. I mean, obviously <laughs> it wasn't animated and things like twirling and stuff like that, but it's like, all right, just stop trying to be Game of Thrones. You're not Game of Thrones. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I didn't even notice that, but you're right. That it's kind of similar to the opening. But what do you think of the music? Wasn't the music mind blowingly good? The music, like, <laughs> it was so far in the in the in the beginning, and then I was like sort of dumbstruck about how terrible the rest of the show was. So. I was blown away by the song. I thought the the song was beautiful. I thought, I thought it was gorgeous. I have to agree. I'm gonna agree with that one. Usually, you know. it takes a while for me to get used to it. this one. From the very beginning, I was like, okay. You well, got me, Black yeah. Sales. Don't let go. But then it kind of did. Let go. Well, yeah, but I will agree, though, with you that mm. I definitely will definitely watch this show over Witcher. I'm, I'm sorry, but I just couldn't. I've, try, I've watched Witcher episode twice, twice. <laughs> and I still haven't gone on to episode two yet because I'm just like, or I could do other things in my life. This one actually, like when I see, I, I agree to disagree with you, where I think when I hang up with you guys, I'll probably- Whoa, 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 okay, oh, hey, whoa, hold hey, on. Whoa, you were dancing on it for the long, <laughs> and Mike and I were watching you like a I know, we're, we're like, like, we're like, it's don't okay. Don't do it. It's okay no, to compare. It. I mean, I don't even know, like, it's a surprise. Like, it's a surprise. I mean- Yeah, because that's the last thing we do is we talk uh, yep, about- Yep, and I forgot that the last time too. So this, I'm <laughs> you folks, it's a surprise. Okay. That's okay. We did. <laughs> we do like the way you were going with uh, shit talking The Witcher though. We're down with yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, but it was kind of like, yeah, it was kind of trash. <laughs> I mean, it was just, it was boring. It was really boring. Mike, um, would you okay. give The Witcher a second watch of the first episode like no. Kelly did? Nope. Yeah, I know, right? I've seen enough of that one, so. 
Mm-hmm. That one's another one trying to be Game of Thrones. Really, all these shows are they're just trying to trying mm-hmm. to pick up uh, the pieces of of what Game of Thrones left us without. Right. Maybe if they like took a different like if they had another Game of Thrones esque type of show, but still owned their own like their own part of it. Like you can still have the like the the storyline and the zest of it, but still making it your own. I just feel like, I, yeah, I feel like wh- whoever these producers and in, in these showrunners were, they were like, we're going to do it just like that. And then if you do it just like something else, it's going to fall short. So it's like, own your shies and then, you know, make your own. There was good nudity, though. Tell us more about that. <laughs> well, okay, I wrote it down. It's Sarah, uh, Jessica <laughs> Parker Kennedy. Uh, she um, She plays, I think it's her. I think it's her. She plays the one... Um, Eleanor, I think. Max. She was oh. she the one that plays the the. I think the she's hooker, the hooker. Right? Yeah. The the yeah the the lady of the night. Oh, um, she was fantastic, Max. She was hot she as was F. Awesome. F. She's so hot. Anyways, I was like, what? And then when her and um and the uh, blonde gal um, Eleanor Eleanor runs the uh yeah, I was like, oh gosh, I was like, shoot, that that was a that was a steamy. I felt like that. See, was- that one kind of threw me though, because first of all, like Eleanor was like trying to help Flint, and so I was like, oh, she's got obviously got a thing for Flint, um, but then like, well, they're pirates, you know, they're like pirates. That- whole everyone's a part of this whole like. That's why I said that it's a drunken debauchery of adventure because. In the end, it always goes back to, well, there are some chi-chis in my face, so I might as well just <laughs> I will just love. And I thought, huh. And then I didn't understand the why, um, as much as I loved the uh, the uh, the one guy and all the ladies, what was the point of that? But also, here's, here's my thing. First of all, he's brand new on that crew, probably doesn't have a cent to his name, so why are why are all these these whores excited to be with a man who has no money to pay them? Because he's new, he's fresh meat. They want they, apparently in this world it's kind of like this backwards thing where they're like that they're saying he since he's new, then they get to hump him. You know that's like their initiation is is ooh boy, and then all the other pirates rather than going and having sex with women, they're like, oh, let's get the new guy. Let's really <laughs> razz him and like, let him have sex with all of the yeah, women yeah. while we go over here and maybe wash our feet or something. And yeah. like, and hang out and argue and watch somebody get yelled at. No, that was the kind of comedy that I was like, <laughs> okay. Like it was kind of had a little frat guy, a little initiation thing to it, which I thought was, you know, kind of fun, but I just didn't know where it was going. I didn't, I thought at first it was going to be that they, he threw them, he got thrown in there with all the women so that something could be discovered about him. I thought for sure that, you know, they had another alternative, like alternate motive. But then, it, nope, they just wanted to. They just wanted to um, bang his brains throw, out. Throw their pledge in there and, and uh, see what happens, I guess. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. fake news. That would never happen, I don't think. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. all the rules. I, I don't, uh, you know. Pirates wouldn't come home from a, a month out on sea and then get give the new guy all of the women and then them not do anything with anybody and then be like yeah let's let's really show him teach him a lesson who he's <laughs> messing with. let's see if he can handle it before he can come on our ship yeah as and, a cook and i will I, say no I doubt say, i was kind of excited to see blackbeard when i was like ooh blackbeard and they're like trying not to get scared i'm like ooh yeah, fun yeah. and i'm like oh well especially right, cuz you know funny, long john silver and blackbeard i mean that's like that's Treasure Island, right? I think so. I'm not. I'm not 100 sure, but uh, uh, I mean, that's that. You're like, oh, these are two iconic characters that are gonna meet, but nope. And uh, you have Harry Bush instead. <laughs> Sorry, can I, I mean, say I, that? I don't mind that, but yeah. I mean, if if the if the, the Bush is gonna be Harry, like, why not just make it real to to the period and like their legs would be hairy, their armpits would be hairy, like everything would be hairy. So. And they want money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they probably want money. But it's it's cool. It's cool. So that yeah, those are a couple things that I was like, falls a little short. But again, hence the overall cumulative watered down version, you know. Because if if somebody showed up at Game of Thrones and was like, here, here's the new guy, they'd be like, great. Where's his gold? Yeah. No. Okay. Okay. Bye. Game of Thrones is much more realistic. You're right. <laughs> you know, or unless they're <laughs> surpassed, but you know. Whatever. So I think that leads us to a good question. It sounds like we're we're kind of 
tickling around something, which is what would you have done to improve black sales, to grab whatever it's doing well and focus that on that or improve upon that? And what would you take out, uh, Michael? Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty good question. Um, I mean, for me, I would say just make it make more sense. Like it doesn't, it, so obviously, you know, we talked about how like the whores screwing this guy for free. It doesn't make sense. Um, the fact that, uh, well, uh, there was some other, th- I just, it was just, it was just, Make it make sense. Make it make sense. <laughs> I, I would I would have liked to see more of of John Silver. I know that we saw a lot of him, but it seemed also like the whole story was just focused on Flint. Um, and yeah. I didn't really buy, or I didn't really like that he's like roughing up this guy that he needs information out of. Like, how is that going to help things? And like. Um, so I, I I thought that his little ruse at the end where he kind of uh, tricked the crew into to voting for him by pretending that this, this guy stole the page out of the book and stuff like that. I thought that was a pretty good ruse, but mm-hmm. by that time I just didn't care enough to like, to find it that interesting either. So yeah. I guess that's the main thing is just the, the, the characters were, were weak in my opinion. And then because of that, the story fell short. Mm. Okay. I would agree with that. I do agree. I do. I do agree with that. That would be, if it's my turn, that would Sorry, be. Sorry, Black Sails. Yeah, well, I just, um, one of my notes I put was, I just, I felt like, it was in the beginning, I felt like he's really too nice to be captain. Like, I just felt like I was looking for more of a stronger personality and then at the very you end, of singleton like, oh, lover, someone's head. And I was like, oh, he's going to smash someone's head. Okay. I was like, I guess that's where, you know, but I kind of wanted to see that strong personality throughout the whole thing. I thought, I mean, he just seemed like not like a pushover, but yeah. How did, I mean, I don't know. Like then that might've gone back to maybe I was a little confused about, you know, it sounds like he was, you know, doing messing up or whatever, but again, he was just very kind and very, you know thoughtful and then all of a sudden rah! and i was like okay okay uh, you know, you yeah know. that was a bit of a stretch too i mean obviously he's a pirate captain so he must have done something kind of brutal to get there but mm. yeah it was just kind of a huge switch from from what he was before i, I agree with you that he in the beginning of the story he's uh he's he's the civilized captain he's the yeah. he's <laughs> the he's the he's the educated one they talked about uh, right. And then all of a sudden at the end, he snaps and he's just like beating this guy. Yeah, which I think I actually, I mean, I, I mean, I like it. It just was like, it just took me by surprise. And then, yeah, I just felt like all the characters have really, they have really good ideas. Like I bet on the breakdown, if you saw it, you're like, oh yeah, that's good. And then it just didn't feel like their personalities weren't, I just felt like they weren't at you know, character wise within reason at a tent, you know what I mean? Like if you're, if you're shooting for like a really strong character, because that's who you are, that's, that's the person that, per, you know, the character is, I thought that I, yeah, I don't know. It just, yeah, it felt like maybe, I don't know, maybe there's too many people. I don't know. i Yeah. They used the word aloof when describing him. I'm like, okay, that's kind of a nicer version of what uh, Michael's saying. I think uh, is that he was just kind of a little detached, a little aloof. But I'll tell you, I kind of thought about this when I was watching it, just at the end when it was ending it, um, w- you know, like what was what was necessarily, you know, kind of wrong with the first episode or what I would have changed is I think they tried to do too much. I think mm-hmm. they just tried to uh, introduce too many scenarios, tried to introduce too many storylines and too many characters. Um, And I think that could have been remedied by having much less on land. Keep it on the boat, you know, on the ship. We we got all the storyline on the ship. It was still working. We were following it along with the the first captain that got taken over. We're watching this. We're learning about Singleton. We're learning about, I forgot uh, the captain's name, Flynn. You know, we're learning about everything is kind of working. Flint. And once they go on land... 
at first I was like, ooh, awesome, this is really exciting and this is really cool. But two or three minutes in, I start kind of getting a little lost. I didn't really realize it until about 10 minutes on land. And after a while, we're, we're learning there's all these new characters and then they start, they start uh, really introducing like the overall politics of the region. I'm like, dude, we're still learning names of two or three main characters and you're right. trying to give us the politics of the entire world already? Give us episode three for that. Like, well, also at the, it much. seemed like at the end it was like it was like three quarters of the way through the story that they introduced this third guy who's vying for captainship, who's this guy Vane. Right. Like originally, well, it was like, okay, you got, Vane. you got Flint and you got Singleton. Okay, that's okay. That we can deal with. But then all of a sudden, there's this third guy. Like, like way at the end, they throw in this third guy. <laughs> that guy, Vane. Mm -hmm. Which I, <laughs> and I think that would have been great if they cut out most of the overall uh, political stuff of the region and, and of the colonies and of the, the, the island and stuff. If it was just about that ship and then Vane comes in and, like, and then you're like, ooh, the plot thickens, that's a good way to end it, right? And then they could still go on land for two or three minutes and introduce one or two characters. But it was just there was just too much. If they'd cut out 20 minutes out of that land stuff and just introduce one or two people there and they're right back out on sea and then Vane pops in on land doing his own thing, that's okay. But it was just, they, they just tried to introduce too many people and too many things. And I feel like if they concentrated. <laughs> Here's it. what we're going to do. It's going <laughs> to be like episode one of Game of Thrones, except in, instead of talking about people that aren't on screen, everybody's going to be on screen. going to be there. <laughs> Yeah. So who do you guys want? Uh, this is another great question. Who do you guys- I'll be the judge be the, of that. <laughs> who, who do you guys want to be the captain? Flint, uh, Mudvayne, who was a, a metal band in the 90s, as you well know. Um, or who is the other guy? Uh, what, what's the other? Singleton. Singleton, the one that died? Full smash. Oh, shoot, you're right, he did die. Okay. So probably not him. Not a great question then, you're yeah. right. <laughs> well, now, now that we have so many you know, people up for captain, they even mentioned somewhere in the episode that there's going to be more people wanting to be captain once, you know, or to birth. So who knows what's going to happen in episode two. But I don't know. I guess, you know. It's not a great question. Because it's yeah. really two people up for right now. We barely know anything about Bane. So. Bane's a little right. sexy here. And I yeah. just pops up out of nowhere. But, you know. Here we are. But the other guy, I mean, I don't know. I just, I wonder, if, I guess he, you know, he smashes, uh, Flint smashes skulls when he needs to. So maybe he can be captain. He is fit to be captain. I just, the whole episode, I was like, well, I don't feel like he's really fit to be captain. And then I thought his, I thought his one guy was like against him until I realized land stuff, land problems. But like, I was like, oh, there, he's against, oh no, he's not. He's actually rooting from the whole time. The guy with the tattoo on his on the back of his head? Yeah, I noticed that later on. He's got yeah. like a, an Illuminati tattoo or something behind yeah. him, doesn't yeah. he? Isn't that what I saw? Like the, yeah. the triangle with the eye? Yep, and it was, yeah, it was, it was pretty Gates. apparent a couple of shots. So I was like, oh, I thought, you know, whatever. So he ended up being, you know, still on Flint's side. But I, I yeah, I guess I just thought it wouldn't be, I would, if I had to vote, I would probably, I'd probably vote for the new guy just to see where it goes. But if Flint knows all about that, uh, lucra de then maybe you, should, maybe you should ride those black sails and see where they go. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think bucks. it pro he pronounced it like three different ways, like Arco de Lima, Ar Arco de Limon, and Arco de, Arco de Limon. Yeah. I, uh, he, he kept Chile saying like con limon, he said. <laughs> well, then this is the real question that you guys are, are all right. I'm waiting for are it. Are hinting about obviously. And, and I think Michael is going to really struggle with this one, and I don't think Kelly will. Who's your favorite character so far in the first episode of Black Sails? And Mike's going like, ugh, I don't like any of them. No, it's easy. It's, uh, it's uh, what's this guy's name? Uh, Gates, quarterma the quartermaster. He was, he was my favorite. I mean, uh, what's a Illum quartermaster? Illuminati head. So a quartermaster, I think, is somebody who, like, gives out supplies and stuff like that or i don't know but maybe it's maybe on a sh pirate ship it's different who knows i had to look up boatswain too or they pronounce it boatswain yeah but that's like apparently the right like the deck boss for the hmm? guy he was like uh his cap the captain's like 
go to was it first mate or something yeah who is did was he really the quartermaster was the first mate or the or the boatswain who's the boat it seemed like the quartermaster because the boatswain he didn't really even know until mm-hmm. until the quartermaster sent him on the mission with him, right so. but the quartermaster seemed more like an advisor he seemed like a trusted advisor more so than say like a second in command but maybe that maybe the advisor <laughs> is a second. hand of the king <laughs> <laughs> uh who's your favorite uh character so far oh wait a minute kelly is it gonna be uh billy bones well i mean it just depends how i'm feeling like there's so many <laughs> you know kelly's like like overall like admire like i love you know if i'm gonna watch the show and be like this show is awesome then yeah i'm gonna go for old bones there but like i don't know that one gal that uh that that tavern maid and she's uh she's pretty hot so i'm like well if i want something to look at it's uh that or this new guy you know th- what's his name vine what was his name again bean 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 yeah weather vane yeah. weather vane I, yeah. like he was like i'm captain and i was like <laughs> oh shut up i wasn't <laughs> sure if they were saying bane i was like bane like batman like yeah oh and then yeah so i just i i would probably it depends how i'm feeling like two glasses of wine deep you know, keto Kelly just just depends on you know <laughs> what, what you know what you're gonna get. So, a couple of faves. I kind of like the girl, the Eleanor. I like her. She was kind of fun. Um, she reminds me. I feel like she got casted because she she reminds me strongly of Kira Knightley. Yeah, I, was, I got that vibe too. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I felt like that was definitely like if we aren't gonna call it Game of Thrones, that was what I was thinking about like what I was gonna call Black Sails. And it was either what I said or I was gonna say something that pertained to Game of Thrones meets like Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. Game of so, Sails. Game of the Caribbean. You know, Caribbean. uh her name was Eleanor Guthrie, and I feel like she had a really weak uh introduction. You know, she comes out, she says a couple of things and somebody says, oh, go fuck yourself. And she turned around like, what did you say? And we're like, okay, I get yeah. it. Obligatory, you know, teach some lessons and show, show them who's boss scene. And we got worse than that. We got, we got, I will fuck myself. And I was like, wait, <laughs> what? You didn't, yeah. that's not t- teaching him a lesson. That's not I, like, oh, yeah. she told you. That's like, okay, that sounds like a great idea. I will do that. I don't know what they're trying to do with. Well, I, for me, it was it was. Uh, I th- I just don't think that the actor was the actress was right for that role. It's just she. I don't think she could really pull off the the tough boss bitch role. Um, mm. I was gonna say I have to admit I kind of I kind of uh, agree with that. Like um, that was I felt like it felt a little. It's kind of like casting me for something like that. I'd be like, I'm gonna. Duh. And I don't know, like, you'd be like, yeah, I know it could be tough. Like, I'm not saying I can't be a biatch, but I'm just saying, like, I just said biatch. So there we go. <laughs> there you go. So your... I just felt like her, like, she she's cute, like, you know, all this stuff. She has that essence. But, yeah, just, like, I was hoping for her at that 10, and then she was kind of, like, at, a, like, a, a 7. And I was like, come on, 10. She's like, 7, cunt. Duh. Yeah, I guess – I guess maybe somebody else would have delivered it in a way that I thought would have worked better, but I just thought that the line itself was just not, it, it just seemed like she was going to turn around and show him who's boss or teach yeah. him a lesson. And really what she did, did was nothing like, you know, I, I don't know. It's like if somebody said like, why don't you go get the fuck out of here? And I said, Oh, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Maybe I will. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, but her right. point. Her, I mean, I, I can, I can, I can see that. I mean, she, like, her point is that, oh, this guy's a good earner. Like, he's that's what's important to her is money. And so I can, I get that that's what they're trying to do with her character. I just didn't buy that she was pulling it off as the actor. Okay, that makes sense. I should have been paying better attention to the other stuff, the other lines in there. Well, I will say, my favorite character is, eesh. I mean, I kind of liked. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like Captain Flint. I kind of like, you know, the the kind of the regular guy aspect of him, whereas everybody's kind of more of an extreme version. And when everybody's an extreme version, you kind of like the person that's a little bit more normal. Whereas if everybody's normal and there's one or two extreme people, you kind of go, oh, I like this extreme guy. Um, but yeah, also Gates. Gates might be my guy too yeah. because 
he seemed like reasonable, you know, intelligent, um, loyal. He Gave, gave good advice. Illuminati guy, the Illuminati guy. Yeah, the Illuminati yeah. neck. Yeah, Big that head. that uh, that Illuminati thing is the gates to hell. Oh, That's so where he goes with that. Goes one. Up <laughs> huh? I wonder how many jokes they had. Where <laughs> what do you got? An eye in the back of your head? <laughs> Three <laughs> eyes. <laughs> and you're all, that is not funnier. <laughs> All right. Do you guys have a least favorite character, like somebody that was just completely forgettable, or that you think that was even annoying or not good? Hmm. Hmm. It was kind of a puddle, like like I said, with the watered down version part. Like, there's no one I truly like didn't like, but at the same time, I kind of went. Well, even even I will say on the flip of it, even Eleanor, like I liked. I thought she was kind of a fun blah, blah, blah character, but she was kind of annoying, I think, on the part of it that I would not, like, she just doesn't come off as that, as the actor. And then, yeah, just like, what are you bitching about, girl? Like, wh what's going on? I don't know. Like, I, again, more confusion on, on the island when when the, the lady of the, you know, Jessica Parker Kennedy was like, yo, like, hey, you want to see my titties? And she's like, I can't. I'm all upset right now. Things are going bad. She's like, what do you want to see my And I was like, why are you Why are you crying? You got this hot girl in front. I, I, I mean, I understand that something's going on with her. I just, I don't know. I just felt like it felt, felt a little short. Like, I don't believe you. You're not. Mm. That. So that was the only time. I mean, if I had to have the least favorite character, I just hope in the future episodes, like she would turn into, you know, something magical. Yeah. Not six. Michael, what about you? Do you hate Eleanor's guts too? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly because, like I said, it's the actor, really. Like, I don't think that she pulled that character off well. Well, maybe, do you think it's maybe just that, like, the character is kind of different than what we saw in that first episode that maybe like they, they cast her based on the stuff we're going to see in, in episode five or 10 or season two. I don't know. I'm not going to stick around to find out. So. <laughs> Michael Rosenberg. Oh, oh oops. <laughs> this is, well, you guys, I was going to say you guys are breaking rules today, but you know, that's the pirate's life for me, right? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, the pirate, that's the pirate code. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if I had to pick somebody, boy, um, there were a lot of weak ones, but they kind of the weaker ones died. Like Richard Guthrie died. Wasn't he like the boss of like that entire island? And then they just, well, he didn't him. die. Technically he just took, took a shot to the shoulder mm -hmm. and they kind of, they, they kind of kidnapped him. Oh, I thought he was dead. Mm -hmm. Oh, the guy in the, okay. Well, okay. Yeah, I they, shot him. I thought when he got shot, I was like, Oh, that sucks. But then the last, the last, uh, pan to him um he like didn't look dead like he looked obviously he's like yo i got shot but it was all up the blood was all up here so i was like huh I think well also they they mentioned something about like oh he'll wake up or at some point or something like that like they they mm -hmm. mentioned it too so and that's Boy. Eleanor's dad right yeah yeah okay yep just I, mean, I guess right. that's what we're meant to, to believe yeah yeah yes. the way he said like he's not around any around to see it i assumed that he was dead and then it got to him and I was like, well, they have the same last, I'm like, well, I think it's the, I think they're related. Maybe it's just, they do different ports or something. But. Well, and they, 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 he talks like, she's like, oh, I'm the one that buys, buys all these stolen goods. And then Vane is like, no, it's your dad that buys the stolen goods. You're worthless. <laughs> yeah, like they like, he like hit it and quit it and then came back and was like, yo, I'm capped. I want to be captain. Blah. And she's like, don't do this. And he was like, you do that to me again, woman. I may forget that I loved you once. <laughs> well, he didn't say it in a southern accent. Yeah, but Practically. that's what you thought. You that's what you thought. You're like, oh, this guy is is a southerner. <laughs> woman, don't make me tell you twice. <laughs> Those accents, some of them were really tough to understand too. By the way, I really liked Max's accent, kind of like the French Caribbean accent. It was really nice, really fun. Uh, some of them cool. Others, I was like, dude, I need these subtitles on because I cannot. I know you guys are speaking English theoretically, but I am not <laughs> catching your words, dude. I need which, to see it on the page. Characters, you know, do you remember which ones in particular? A few of the the lesser characters. Okay. You know what I mean? 
yeah, yeah. it was not it, like it certainly wasn't uh you know what's his name flint uh or duke Thanks, Michael. What about Scarlet? There you go, Snake Eyes. Uh, this is we're, we're naming GI Joe characters. Shipwreck. <laughs> Flint was the second in command. Uh, it wasn't like one of the main characters, but but definitely two or three characters, lesser characters. I was like, I don't even, and I just it made me not pay attention, honestly. You not usually use subtitles. I do for the for the these purposes, so I catch okay. like more names and stuff like that. Uh, and locations and things that may be important. Uh, and Amazon's great because you can see the, the characters in each scene. It tells you which characters. So that was right. perfect for that, me. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and you guys bought me enough time to tell you who my least favorite character is. <laughs> but I still don't know. Oh, oh, you, you know who it is? It, maybe it's Mudvayne. Because I didn't... Oh, no, no, no. I remember who it is. It's Rackham. Rackham and Breakham. Okay? He was the guy... They mentioned him once or twice at the beginning. I don't know if we saw him because many of them look the same. So I don't know if we saw him at the beginning, but I know that they mentioned him a couple times throughout the episode. And then at the very end, Max goes to him and she says, I think I have something you might want to buy. That's Rackham and Breakham, oh, right? right, right. Oh. No, no, he, yeah, he, yeah, he and I'm like, I'm like, who? And, and, and I was like, when, when I checked on Amazon, when, you know, on the scene, it said it was Rackham. And I was like, okay, I remember them mentioning the name. Like somebody said, you know, he'd want to buy him or he would do this or something like that. And I'm like, who, who is Rackham again? What, how does he factor into this? What's going on? I'm, I was just totally lost. And so now I don't like him. Well, okay. he, was, he was one of Vane's cronies, though. One oh. of. Oh, well, that's who he was. Okay. So oh, was so like, he was what? Team Vane. Yeah, he he was on he was on the beach with that killing girl. Mosiah. With that, yeah, exactly. Well, I think it was it was the the girl who killed the one guy, and then I think it was Vane that killed like the elder guy, whatever his name was. Mosiah, I think. Mosiah. Hmm. Okay, yeah, because I was like, what? Wait, what do we buy? The very I felt so terrible. I was like, how am I supposed to go into this this video the chat with when I the last <laughs> sentence was. I want something you might want to buy. I was like, great. What is it? I think it was the page. Yeah, of it's book, obviously right? the, it page, the page. Yeah. Okay. 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 I See, didn't know I for sure. It, there was a couple times where I will agree with Michael where I went like kind of drifted off in my brain somewhere. So when I zoned back in, I was like, shit, what are we buying? Sorry. I mean, I was still paying attention, but like I said, like, like my mind was like, like my mind would like be like looking at like the, the makeup on, on uh, what's this guy's name? Uh, uh, Singleton, like all those scars on his face, I'm like, man, that's some really good makeup. Yeah, and like I'm looking lit. at, uh, at and Billy Bones' uh, uh, costume, and I was like, oh, it's, oh, it's just great how they aged it so well. Um, but then I was like, the story, I was like, Ugh, what's going? On? What is this <laughs> crap? Speaking of story, terrible. All right. <laughs> I love it when Michael gets upset. I don't like it when I get annoyed. I like it when Michael gets annoyed. Um, so speaking of all of those words, uh, Kelly and Park, let's talk about you for a moment, shall we? Oh, okay. First, first things first, you dressed up like a pirate for us, and that is so cool. You look great. Uh, you put some time into the makeup and even kind of Smudge some things around. A dirt. It's my dirt. Ah. And you got ah. some props. <laughs> so, my, booty, my booty chest. Do you like what? My, She's my got a chest of booty. I've got a chest of chest of booty. That, she that, has a chest and booty. Mm -hmm. That's actually really cool. Good job. I found it. I found it on an old prop set. Um, they were given out. They were given out old props from like the 1940s and 50s. So this is straight up from a set from like a bazillion years ago. Wow. Giving? They just gave it to you. No, no, no. I, I bought it. Oh, okay. I was <laughs> like, like, whoa. They were selling it for like like clearance price. So it was originally like 120 and they yeah. gave it for like 40. And I was like, Yeah, they were just giving it away coins. for money. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, so you like pirates? You like dressing up? You like going to Renaissance fairs or you like fantasy? Yes, it's thing? my favorite. So um, my favorite thing is to do is to uh, dress up in different costumes and 
Um, like I would like to do more live action role playing. Now that being said, 2020 little COVID times, they closed <laughs> everything down. Yeah. They closed down the dang Renaissance fair. That was pretty much like a low point of my life this year is when they finally canceled because everything was getting canceled. And I, and I wrote on Facebook, not the rent fair bitches. And then, but this is before I obviously realized how serious it was. And then they closed it and I was like, I'm pretty sure I drank like two bottles of wine that night by myself. I don't so know kind of like the Renaissance Fair, but indoors. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing. Well, and then, yeah, it's amazing. So then um, I do that. And then at some point, my goal is, again, 2020, I wanted to do it. But 2021, I'm going to um, I'm going to fly across to the East Coast. And there is a thing called Weekend Warrior Experience. Um, you can find their uh, uh, their thing on, on Felon Fair is their Instagram and, and Weekend Warrior. And um, is that yeah. like Harry Potter? What was yeah. that? That was the that was Harry Potter. Nice. <laughs> I, tried to, I tried to tune it out before it happened, but here. No, I think you caught it in enough time. I think that was that was like not enough notes for that for them to come after us or so. Except for the tree. Yeah. <laughs> the true fans will know right away. You, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I'm not I, a true fan. But you knew. Yeah, but I did. So, it yeah, took me a like, second. But here's the real question, though: What is your pirate name? Or, I mean, again, like there's many different Kelly phases, and I feel like I feel like today it's Captain Kel Sparrow. Ah, a little bit of um, yes. Hold on, but yep. So you're also an actress, and a darn fine one, by the way. You're an excellent actress. We've worked with you before, and we love you. Um, have you ever played? a pirate or something in the medieval times? And if not, would you love to? Well, okay, so one, yes, I did play a pirate. Um, I played a pirate on, I was on this uh, this webisode series. It's a comedic one called Axis of Action. And mm -hmm. it basically centers around these two, this couple that they're like playing and then all of a sudden, um, they jump into like some fantasy world or whatever. And so one of them is, she basically, she wants to change the channel and he wants to keep his channel. So all of a sudden they're on the pirate ship and like we like filmed out on like the, like the sea and stuff. It was really cool. Wow. Especially for such a small budget. Yeah, so pretty awesome. That was really cool. So I'll probably, I'll, I'll send you guys, I'll send you guys the link maybe. Yeah, and, do. Um, yeah, and then of course, I haven't been able to play a lot of medieval stuff except for castles and quests when I was like in third grade. Still my favorite. Anyways, I was knight number three. Um, but anyway, <laughs> uh, yep, I would. It's always my ultimate goal. Like that's my that's my career dream. Is pretty much, um, I just whatever film or television like like Game of Thrones, pretty much. And I don't even necessarily need you know the series like the the main character like leading lady. Although leading lady would be rare. But like mm. otherwise, I really feel like I would be a really great sidekick. Like. Mm. You know, not comedic sidekick, but like the you know person who tries to be optimistic and don't worry, it's just one beheading and it's just your one dad. You know, it's okay. <laughs> I then, could also see you as maybe like the the untrustworthy witch that they have to like work with, and she turned out to be not such a bad witch, but kind of mysterious, yeah. and they don't know for sure if they can trust her right away. Yep. No, exactly. Exactly. So <laughs> Just person. like that. <laughs> I could be that person. So we'll see. Like I said, TB, TB, TBD. And, um, you know, I, they have, I think it's still like really big right now is the, is the, uh, um, the like medieval stuff. Like, I don't know if I'm, I'm really hoping that like, as my try to continue and further my career, I hope that at some point it still continues to be like in it, you know the all these marvel movies and all these whatever they keep like remaking them which is kind of eh, whatever that's everyone's opinion but different opinions but like at the same time i say keep it going if you guys are going to still be casting more people for supernatural you know uh roles whatever medieval let's just go kill kill a bit your dog does not like that kind of language, yeah. Kelly. Merlin, come here. There's That's... somebody, I'm so sorry, excuse us. There's someone here, come here, and you don't need to talk like that. Oh, <laughs> sorry, it's me, Booty. It's, no, it's my, it's my, what do they call it in the episode? They said, um, 
the little the crazy guy who was on the boat with them. He had a kitty. Somebody had, had a, a kitty. kitty. He called it. He called it Boots. Boots, get over here. Come here, Boots. What's it called, Michael, in like Dungeons and Dragons when like a ranger or a druid or something has like a companion animal? What are those called? Familiar? Familiars. Yeah. Good job, guys. Good work. Yep. Merlin's my familiar. It straight up is. Like he's straight up like we are we are as one. <laughs> okay, give me sorry, give me just one moment, guys. I'll be right back. I yeah, it's okay. No like a, ra a ranger would probably be like a companion. Where like a, a warlock or, or or a wizard would have a or a witch would have a familiar. Mm. <laughs> so I'm thinking of sorry, the camera just went over to her screen and just showed a blank wall <laughs> for like two seconds. It's like the the YouTube equivalent of radio's silence, you know, like white noise or whatever. Um, now it's just about time for the terrible twos here. Oh, and you're just in time to join us for the terrible twos, Kelly Park. Yep. If you can believe that. Put my that. out to the wind. Uh, so it's what Michael calls the terrible twos. We've gone over it a bunch of times. He pretends like it's not his idea, but it obviously is. Everybody knows it is. And here we go. Yep. I'm terrible the one twos. that came up with the stupid name, the terrible twos. Right. So Kelly's like, I don't understand what's happening. Yep, I'm just, I, yep. Quick refresher. Terrible twos. Right. So here come the terrible twos. It's, it's just a really terrible name for these last two questions that we ask. Right. <laughs> okay. Michael, Michael had two ideas. He's like, should we call them the two and two? Or the, like Chuck Woolery? Or the terrible twos? I was like, I guess the terrible twos. I would not have chosen either of those. <laughs> anyway, you, we've made Kelly very uncomfortable. She's like, I wish I was on a pirate ship right now. <laughs> <laughs> Take the chances. <laughs> Uh, no, so it's the final two questions of the show. And the first question in the Terrible Twos is, on a scale of one to 10, Michael Kenyon Rosenberg, what would you give 2. this 5. first episode <laughs> of Black Sails? 2.5. Wow, care to tell us why? Yeah, I, I, I actually, I bumped it up from a zero. <laughs> Wow, a scale just of one because, to ten is zero. That's like turning because it up they to have eleven. Really good uh, makeup Costume. and costumes. Like that's that was the saving grace. That's why this show did not get a zero for me, is because the costume was really great. The props, the sets were really great, um, and the, the like. I said the makeup, like the intricacy of the scars on Singleton's face, were just amazing. Um, the the. Yep. I noticed that too. Yeah. The, the 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 black cat crew members that had like all the cool um, like tattoos and stuff on them and, and and scars on them too. Like it was just it was really really all around really good makeup. Mm -hmm. And then like I mentioned, like the intricacy of the of the costumes was just fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, but everything else was terrible. So two point five. Very authentic and a lot of attention That's to detail plus. there. What about uh, you, Kelly? Uh, would you give it a 2.5 or higher or lower? I would give it higher. I felt like, you know, overall, I really liked the, I liked the episode. I'm excited. Like I said, <laughs> didn't want to give anything away. Wait, but wait, wait, wait. That's the second yeah. question. Yep, yep. That's what I'm getting. Yep. So anyways, so I would give it. <laughs> <laughs> she chuckles nervously. Um, <laughs> uh, I would probably give it a solid seven. Hmm. Okay. I would give, I would give it a seven. I like I said, the first three points automatically go to, um, or three probably four points. I would say I really loved the set. I loved the the costumes. I love everything. Like that was on point. I thought if you wanted to do a Game of Thrones esque, there you are. Like I thought that was up to par. Um, and then the rest of it was, I think the rest of the points goes to like curiosity and just like I this is totally like my zest and this is my totally my genre. Like there's. I watch an embarrassingly like not very many shows that people watch because I'm so busy watching things like, like black sales and things like that. Now that mm. being said, I'm honest, this is actually the first time I've seen this episode. Um, but that's because I didn't have stars. And so, you know, but I, I give it, I think overall it's got potential. It's got whatever I give it a seven. You know what we're going to do when we post this, we're going to say, Fun drinking game. Take a drink every time somebody says Game of Thrones in this episode. <laughs> That'll be a good one. Oh. And we could do, and we could do, uh, when, what was the one we did by the creator of Rick and Morty? 
Solar Opposites. Solar Opposites. Drinking game. Every time we mention game, uh, not Game of Thrones, uh, Rick and Morty. Game of Rick and Morty. Although that one would kill somebody. Uh, Anyway, so scale of one to ten, um, I thought that opening sequence was gangbusters. I thought it was perfect. I thought the tension was built. I thought it was beautifully written. It was really cool. I was all for it. I thought the opening theme song was an A+. Um, I thought the rest of it was good, but they tried to do too much. I feel like they should have cut out 10 to 20 minutes. It should have been 45 minutes instead of 65 minutes uh, because right at about 35 or 35 minutes, I remember checking and thinking there should only be five or 10 minutes left of this episode. And when I saw there was another 30 minutes, I was like, okay, I don't know what's happening anymore. So I would, I would still give it a seven. I would give it a solid seven. Yeah. I mean, it was, the beginning was fantastic and the rest was, was all right. Was okay. The rest (laughs) to me was, was okay. Like there was, there were some good aspects. The production value is fantastic. Agreed. Um, The writing needed a little work, a little cutting. Mm -hmm. Anyway, seven. Final question is, For the purposes of this podcast, you watched the first episode of your own volition. Now that the podcast is over, would you watch the second? Michael Canyon Rosenberg? Mm, I'm going to guess. No. (laughs) No. What about you, Kelly? Would you watch the second? Well, I mean, you probably assume yes. And, you, you know, the assumptions are correct. Yes. However, I will be on Michael's side if I do have something else going on. Um, anything else at all that's even remotely like, then I probably would do that first. So something to be said about that. But overall, yeah, I think I think if I have like a, a you know a down day where I'm like, you know what, I'm just gonna sit here and watch TV all day, then I'm probably gonna pop in Black Seal, see what's up. Yeah. See if it, you know, climbs. So I'm right, Mr. really Mr. Seven. Would you watch the second? I'm really really on the fence about it i've been really going back and forth because my heart says no my heart says no i would not watch the second because i wasn't interested in watching the second half of the first episode right but pirate stuff is pretty cool so i think i would watch the second episode just just to give it give that theme song a second a second watch and just to see what would happen so so i'm only saying yes because it's a pirate show i think i think that's the only that wasn't thing. even enough for me i mean i yeah. love pirates you know me but um i just it, i couldn't do it man i don't think i want to watch the second but i think <laughs> i mean i definitely don't want to watch the second but i think i would just Oh, God, I need to end this before I change my mind again. Because <laughs> I'm talking myself out of it, man. <laughs> totally talking. I don't want to. I don't want to watch the second episode. But that's not the question exactly. Anyway, so uh, Kelly, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Yeah, for and letting bring it, me on. Bringing up the production value of this show. Yes. And what I'm trying to say is that don't forget this podcast, to let us know. Uh, let us know. If you want us to watch a show, you have to, you have to do these things, Ryan. Like <laughs> You do it. Yeah. You're better at remembering. If you want us to watch something, don't forget to write in the comments, WTF, not Black can Sales, because we I, already watched that. WTF? Yeah. You can, but not on this video. Not on this one. <laughs> uh, WTF, Seinfeld. Um, WTF, yeah. Rick and Morty. Tell us that in the comments below uh, so that we can see it. If you do it in the live chat, we don't see it as well, but make sure you put it in the comments below. And if you guys like the person's suggestion, give it a thumbs up or reply to it. That way, the more the more likes something has, the more replies, the better chance we have of saying, hey, maybe we should do this one if 40 people agree. Yeah. Uh, so definitely you know, communicate in the comments below what you'd like us to see. Uh, sorry, I got quiet because I was noticing you've got the tattoo on the back of the head that behind yeah. you michael that's cool that's cool yeah. i've had it there for some time yeah. i'm not the most perceptive guy <laughs> uh, don't uh, go ahead don't forget to leave us a like thumbs up um do not leave us a thumbs down or else uh, <laughs> kelly kelly's gonna come after you or else we'll send you to the plank <laughs> yeah
Yeah. Oh, by the way, I forgot before I go, I just wanted to do one joke because yes. of course. Oh boy. Pirate joke. Oh, what is a pirate's favorite letter? R. You might think it'd be R, but actually the C is their first letter. <laughs> yeah. The what? The C will always be their first love. Okay. Yeah, you don't say it right. You got to say or. You think it'd be the R, but it's really the C. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I know. Watch out. I'm here all day. <laughs> I like it. Good teamwork, you guys. Yes, that's my favorite pirate joke, actually. What's oh, your yeah. I got favorite? one more, just so you know. How much oh. does a pirate. Oh. How much does a pirate charge for corn? How much does a pirate charge for what? Corn. A buccaneer. Oh, buccaneer. Yeah. <laughs> Michael knows what's up. All right, fine, fine. I, I give up. I give up. <laughs> no, those were great. Those were great. That was so, my second favorite one, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we should have thought of a, of a bunch of pirate puns. For this uh, actually, the one the way I heard it was, how much do pirates charge for ear piercings? Oh, Something that's like no that. good. Yeah. yeah well, I'm from Iowa, so. <laughs> that one's, I think the corn one's better, yeah. I think so, too. Yep. All right. <laughs> So this is how we close it out. No, that wasn't a bus. Those were glorious. And uh, this is how we close it out. Um, this podcast was full of chest and booty. <laughs> this podcast was basically a review of Game of Thrones. <laughs> this podcast was a watery Game of Thrones with titties. Game of Thrones this, had this titties. This podcast though, too, was? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we talked. I mean, that was kind of my my highlights of the whole yeah. uh, episode, I suppose. We should have prepared pirate puns for this. That would have been funny. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you so much, Kelly, for joining us. That was awesome. Thanks for thank dressing you. up. and You really raised the production value of our show today yeah. with the costuming and the makeup and the from zero From zero to one. Yep, on a scale of zero to one. Yes. Yep. I'll take it. So you tell anyway, me. give us a like, give us a subscription, subscribe, hit the bell icon, tell your friends, and let us know in the comments below who you want us to check out next. All the best, and uh, see you next time.